Welcome to the Business Owners Show, and today we have someone uh, who I've met uh, eight, nine years ago for the first time, uh, uh, Larry Face. And as I often have said on the show, there's those that talk that they can help, and then there's those that can actually help, and Larry's one of the preeminent number one people in this area uh, as far as uh, helping businesses grow and, and solve their issues. And the client list, Larry, if I may, is huge. I mean, there's hospitals, there's Florida Department of Health, there's Manatee Memorial Hospital, Polk Community College, Chambers of Commerce. I mean, it's, a, it's an extensive list. It seems like you can work with uh, billion-dollar companies and also smaller companies. Can you kind of introduce yourself a little bit and tell us what you do and how you do it? Well, I've got a company called Next Level Achievement, and what we do is we work with people from the perspective of leadership development and team building or team engagement programs, as I like to call them. And I think the real key is, you know, when I think about a business, there's a lot of different aspects to a business. I always think about it from the perspective of what I call the five P's, which is really where you start to take a look at the planning aspect of a business, which is a part that a lot of people miss. Uh -huh. And then you start to take a look at the processes and systems to make things happen. And then you take a look at the, the products and the services that are there. Hopefully, you got profits and cash flow to go along with it. And the fifth one is people. And that's the one common element of most businesses is people. And that's what my specialty is, is teaching leaders how to work better with people. Because most of the, you know, the studies have proven that people that leave companies typically leave because of a lack of relationship with their with their leader, mm -hmm. not because of money. And so I get called in a lot of times when a leader is either struggling with communicating with their people in a way that's positive and motivates them into action, or sometimes in a case where a leader's moved up the ladder a little bit, but they're just kind of stuck in being able to move to that next step, and they're kind of struggling with mm -hmm. developing their skill set to be able to do that. So lots of times that's when I'll be pulled in as well. well what's the, uh, where do you see the... Uh uh, how do you see uh, leadership versus uh, management? Well, I, I mean, the academic aspect of that always is about leadership is more about vision and management is more about managing processes and systems. So a really great leader is the one that gives the vision and inspires people into action and then a quote-unquote manager, as it may be, they're the ones that make sure that those visions and the goals that are set forth actually end up happening. So they're the day-to-day you know, operations. Project, project and operations management side of things. So the right. army can march, but somebody's got to supply them and the right. logistics. Right. Knowing thyself. By the numbers. Knowing thyself, how important is that? Well, it's critical. I, you know, and, and for me, to be honest, I'm much more, it's, I'm much more from the what I think of as the leadership side relative to the visionary side and the way that they communicate that to people and the way they communicate directly with people than I am about the processes. So. I can do process, but that's not what my what my real niche is. And there are a lot of people who can do better than I can, as a matter of fact. But when it comes to teaching people how to relate to people in a way that motivates and inspires them, I'm really good at that. You've helped a hundred plus companies. My guess is maybe hundreds, but at least a hundred that that you know I would be willing to say. You've seen many many management uh, situations. You've seen many companies. Out of all these companies, you've started to develop a cloud of ideas as to what works, what doesn't work. Right. Okay. I mean, there's no certainty, but I mean, there's everything's a little bit different. So let me throw some points out, and okay. then give me some of the things that you learned that can help other people listening to this show do things better. So right. kind of a quick round robin here. Uh, best quick advice on marketing. Best quick advice on marketing. Well, we're outside of the leadership part here, but I. To me, marketing is about really finding out what your client or your customer really needs and wants and coming at it from that perspective. I think the best analogy to that is when you do a business plan and you do a mission statement, a lot of people get lost in a flowery mission statement that has to do with how they do things. Uh -huh. In all reality, the only thing that's really important is what are you doing for that client? And that's not about supplying them with a product. It's about typically meeting an emotional need of theirs. So as an example, I'll use a simple one from a real estate perspective. It's not about selling somebody a house. It's about providing them with a safe place that they can raise their family and enjoy 
you know, enjoy their neighbors and do those things. So to me, that you know, that's what marketing is really all about: is finding out what what's the real need. What about sales? Can you say a few words about sales? Well, I think I think the they're key not was, the same. The, the key with sales is building relationships, number one, and figuring out how to meet the needs that your clients desire, rather than trying to create a product that maybe doesn't meet the needs. And that takes research a lot of times. What have you learned about hiring? Oh, hiring. I think the most important thing about hiring is making sure that you hire the right people that are going to fit with the employee culture rather than just a skill set. And we're seeing human resources departments really turn more and more to that because one thing they know is that you can't teach attitude. You can't teach work ethic. I mean, you can if you've got a long time and a lot. You Maybe, know, yeah. But, but it's a tough one. Whereas you can teach skill sets, hard skill sets. You can always send them to school. You know, you can have people come into training. You can do a lot of different things. So more and more people are paying attention to really gaining clarity about what they want your, the employee culture to look like. And then when they're doing the interviewing process, make, make sure there's behavioral interviewing questions in there that find out whether or not that person's going to fit with the culture. I've often seen a lot, I see a lot of businesses also, and I see a lot of family businesses. Mm. And in a joking way, I can say I can double sales by getting rid of half the family. Maybe that's cruel, but uh, what have you learned about family businesses? Well, that's more know, positive than what I learned. Well, I mean, the challenge with family businesses is you hire people that you want to grow into the business rather than necessarily people whose unique strengths are going to be the people that they need to be for that. So I think what you have to do is you really have to have somebody else come in with you when you're hiring them so that you can have an objective voice in there uh -huh. and take a look and see whether or not they've really got the strengths to bring in. If you've got somebody that you're trying to bring in to take over the business and maybe part of that job is going to be marketing and yet they're a, they're a major introvert, you know, they can't stand spending time with people, and that's just a piece of who they are. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, right. Then you're going to be asking something of them that they can't do. And so I think having an outside influence in that is really critical. I, I think that I totally, totally, totally agree with that. Uh, I, I looked at your web page and I saw vision and communication. How do those interact? Well, it's great if you come up with a, a really fantastic vision, but you've got to be able to communicate it for it to be effective. Yeah. And you've got to be able to communicate it to all the stockholders, so, or stakeholders, I should say. So. That's your employees, that's any strategic alliances you have, it may very well be your suppliers. The better they understand the vision, the better able they are to be able to help you move towards that vision, to be part of you know, the machine that gets you there. As far as, uh, as, far as the concept of leadership and coach, because we kind of touched on that, could, could we kind of cover, wh wh where do you see, and I guess the consultant part comes in there too, where do you see the difference between, let's say, leadership, coaching, and consulting. How do you differentiate all those? Well, you know... Because, I mean, when you, when you come into a company, do they want you to lead the way? Do they want you to coach? Well, they really... What they typically want is they want you to coach. And you're in different spaces even as the same person because consulting, to me, the way I define that, is they want you to give them an answer of how to do something. Coaching is when you really help people get outside their box and maybe perceive something differently than what they did, see something they didn't see before, uh -huh. and help them find their own solutions. The one thing we know about people is that their idea is the best idea. So if, if you can help coach a person so that the idea is actually coming from them, from, you know, from internal, from that perspective, then they're going, to be, they're going to place it to be a much higher priority on their list, and they're going to be much more motivated to do that. I think from a leadership perspective, I really believe that the what I call the art of coaching, because I really believe it's an art, I think that's one of the most important skills that a really great leader can have. You know, standing up there and raising your arm up and saying, come on, let's go forward troops is a fantastic thing, but that's not enough. In today's environment, you've got to be able to coach people. You've got to be able to inspire them rather than motivate them, and especially with the younger generations. Larry, what, kind of com what kinds of companies do you work with? Uh, actually, I work with a lot of different kinds of companies because the one thing for me is that because my specialty is working with people, that's the common element in every company. But the interesting thing is I, I, I do a lot of bi business with the medical industry today, and I have for about the last three or four years especially. Mm -hmm. um, and what I have found is most businesses with all the different CEOs I've worked with and all the different leaders I've worked with, they all say, well, my business is different. 
you know, and it's got different kinds of challenges and different kinds of problems. And I'm saying, well, you got people. And typically the challenges are about the same, but I have to say in the medical industry, they've got some additional challenges, which are pretty the interesting. The federal regs and all yeah, that. Yeah, they've just got so many different outside forces that are coming in and controlling where they're at. And, you know, you take a look at, you take a look at some of the, like the hospitals here, and it's just incredible what they do from a leadership perspective to be able to, you know, keep themselves uh, in the right space with all the different changes that are taking place in their industry consistently. And it's pretty impressive, actually. They're a lot do, of fun to work with. Do you, th you think that's, uh, that's increased in the last five years or ten definitely. years? Or? Yes, definitely. And increasing even more. I mean, you're looking at the Supreme Court right now making decisions on Obamacare. That's going to have a huge effect on what happens from the, from the so medical the, industry perspective. Is, is it fair to say that most people really are... Uh, really don't know what's happening uh, going forward um, well they know as much as they can know yeah. <laughs> but as 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 everything keeps changing they have to keep updating I think one of the things I like about the medical industry is I love working with change uh -huh. and helping people adapt to that helping organizations adapt to that and I don't know any industry that goes through more not that lots of industries aren't going through a lot I mean I've worked with banks before they right. they've gone through their fair share as well and you know, most industries have, but the medical industry, that's, that's just fast so today. It really is. I, I was heavy into hospital products and then also into drug discovery. We were building equipment for discovering new pharmaceuticals. Yeah. And being out of it for a year is like a lifetime. Oh, yeah. Hey, everything changed. Yeah, three, four years is huge, as a matter of fact. Huge. Of, of all your experience, uh, the word trust having trust working with your client, what does that mean to you? How have you seen that lived out? Well, I, I think the key with that is confidentiality. You know, I mean, somebody has to be so comfortable with you, they can talk to you about anything. And not just business, because let's face it, it's all personal. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, Very. if you're a CEO or yeah. a leader, or you're leading a company or you're part of the leadership team, your personal life is affecting what's going on in the business and the, what's happening in the business is affecting what's going on personally. So they're so intertwined sometimes that you've got to be able to be 100% comfortable from, from the perspective of sharing anything that maybe you wouldn't even share with your spouse or with your attorney or anybody like that. On a personal level, who are your mentors? Who are your heroes? Uh, well, if I go back, I'd say Norman Vincent Peale. Oh, would be geez. one of my originals. I mean, that that man is incredible, and I I had the opportunity to have dinner with him a couple of times actually. Um, uh, John Maxwell, oh. I think, is probably one of the greatest American leadership writers and speakers. As a matter of fact, he's he's actually a better speaker than writer. He's an excellent writer. Um, you know, the, you take a look at Marcus Buckingham is actually an up you know more up and coming. He's a, really the originator of the unique strengths concept, and he continues to get outside the box and take a look and see how that can apply, and I think that's one of the most important pieces for making sure you've got the right people in the right seats today. If, if, you, were to, uh, uh, if you were to shine a light, okay, for the colleges, the universities, the business schools, what area do you think they should focus on that maybe they're not today? Well, I mean, you, you're living, you're living, you're on the street, you know what's happening. So. I, I, I give you two quick thoughts. Number one, you take a look at a college like Ringling University, and what Ringling's doing right now is they're actually teaching these their creative people about business. Oh, I didn't know that. Because they've got this huge, you know, th this huge focus on saying that we don't want starving artists, quote unquote. Right, graduating right. from our school. So they don't just teach them about their craft, about their art. They also teach them about being business people out there, and they've been very successful with it. And, and that, to me, is incredible. And, and in fact, if you look at the other side of things, they're also, um, they're also doing a lot right now to bring more creativity into business because given the amount of change we go through all the time, business has got to be much more willing to be creative, get outside the box, think from a different perspective. So they're really affecting that to a great degree. I think the other part is, and I've always said this ever since I was in college, if I, when people come to me for advice on what they should get, you know, as far as um, uh, what they should take in school, I always say they should at least have a communications minor. Oh yeah. I mean, if you're going to be in business, you have got to be able to communicate. communicate. And in today's environment, from a leadership perspective, communication is the 
biggest challenge that leaders face, you know, when they're when they're not being as, as successful as they want to be. I want to thank you very much for joining us today. And if folks want to get a hold of you, uh, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, they can go to nextlevelachievement.com or they can call me at 9413513245. Excellent. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank me. you, sir. It was great. Thank you. Thanks a lot.